Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of the next issue here on the Culture Cache. This week I thought I'd take a slight break away from Civil War, mind you, to go over the hype train that is DC's Rebirth. <clears throat> now before anybody worries, the only thing I'm going to be going into is the solicitations that have been out there for upcoming months of some of the books that are going to be going after Rebirth's done, and a little bit of the hype. I know spoilers are already out, even though the book technically isn't released until tomorrow, or I guess it would be today by the time you hear this, since I record this. I'm recording this on the Tuesday beforehand, and the issue won't release until, well, in some places, midnight tonight, but unfortunately for where I'm at, it won't release until tomorrow. So, while I do know those spoilers. I don't like to go into a lot of the stuff until I actually have the book physically in hand, have given it a proper read, and can confirm that the things that I see are not fake or, you know, misconstrued or anything like that. Obviously, if it's been posted on there from some certain, some sites that I know DC and several other publishers use that are legit, then they are legit spoilers. So I do know, for the most part, what is and isn't legit, but that doesn't mean I'm going to go into anything right now that some people may or may be trying to avoid. All I'm going to go into is the stuff that has been shown as solicitations for upcoming months, and that's about it. So a lot of what I'm hearing in Rebirth and seeing is that this is supposed to be what puts the current universe back on path and from a lot of interviews this is still going to be technically using the new 52 universe as its foundation now for anyone that's read both multiversity and convergence which if you've ever went back and listened to some of my previous videos and read some of my previous articles you know are kind of hand in hand a recreation of the entire DC multiverse you get to see convergence show what led to the current multiverse, the events that led to that, including get, uh, basically removing all previous crises of any type, and restarting the Infinite Earths universe here. But as the multiverse, multiversity and the end of Convergence both show, the current universe and current multiverse as a whole is an evolution of what came before so new 52's universe is still technically the evolution recreation even mind you of the pre new 52 universe just as earth 2 society now as the book's called is the evolution of the pre new 52 earth 2 characters or i guess you could say back when Earth 2 itself was actually separate and not just blended together into the mainstream Earth from post-original -cri uh, post crisis, uh, sorry. But that's neither here nor there. We're going to apparently see or get what we were missing. What, as I love how apparently the writers are writing in a a story reason for why the New 52 did not work in a lot of people's eyes. Which, I'm going to go out there and say this, get it out of the way in my opinion, I actually enjoyed the New 52. It was fresh, it was, it was different, and as I've went in before, you had every character was taken to a different aspect of what happens when they go down a different path than what they had, or different events happen to them, from previous times. A, a big factor of this was Superman losing both parents at a young age and very dependent on how he was raised to give his humanity as opposed to being dependent on the actual people in his life being what gave him his humanity. Uh, him making bigger mistakes and I know this is a reference to an old video but you definitely should go back and check it out if you haven't yet, but one of the big factors of the difference between the New 52 Superman and pre-New 52 Superman is pre-New 52 Superman was mu very much the father figure of the DC Universe. And anyone that's read Convergence and has went into and collected the current book that's got pre-New 52 Superman in the current universe 
they are continuing that trend. He is a dad and married to Lois Lane and is continuing that that guiding light, that fatherly figure of the universe, so to speak, you know. Whereas New 52 Superman was still young, learning, developing. He was going through going through everything that can beat you down in life, becoming that man. You got to see a Superman that is becoming what he can be eventually, but going down different roads, different paths from before. Uh, we're going to definitely get to see a lot of change. Apparently there's going to be some big deaths, some big reveals, and a return of a, another hero, which I'm going to go on a on a long shot here and guess out of all the things I have seen that the big return they're talking about is not the pre-New 52 Superman since he's already been here for a while so that go, should go without saying but I for one am excited I am very thrilled to see this the only thing that I have against any of this is not even the book itself the story sounds amazing you know, we're going to get this lightheartedness back in the DC Universe, this power of positivity that we didn't have before, where the New 52 was still positive in a lot of ways, it was still darker, it was, it was too much trying to blend today, not enough just trying to give everybody a sense of, you know, of, of positivity. By the end of that, you know, you get you've got your books that give you drama and everything and hype you up, and you've got your reasons for reading these. But by the end of the day, when you read a Superman story, you want to feel, you know, you want to feel good about what you've read. There's, it comes from the the bright colors on the picture, him saving everybody, him being that role model that we all need. You know, that how many lives have changed because somebody sat down and read a Superman comic and saw this big bold hero step up and battle these overcoming odds with all this power and you felt man I want to take on the day like that I want to be able to do this obviously not fly or things like that or you know run faster than a, a locomotive but you know try to overcome the obstacles in your life that are too difficult for you normally you know and Getting that power of positive, positivity back in to comics is a very big thing to do here. And the tag rebirth is a very important thing here. It, it was the trend that followed off of Green Lantern Rebirth, which was a huge game changer for the Green Lantern section of the DC Universe. And we can very much tell this is going to be a huge game changer for the DC Universe as a whole. The only complaint I have so far on Rebirth isn't even the book, it's not the story, it's not the upcoming stories, mind you. My biggest complaint right now, without sitting down and fully reading the book and, you know, confirming everything and getting that full, intense read on, is just DC's tag of making so many of its books twice monthly. I just, I personally do not have the budget for something like that. And a lot of people don't. And as any company will do, they will go out of their way to justify what they're doing. A lot of it is them saying that they're going to take their biggest sellers and do them twice monthly. And they still come up to, I think in the last thing I read, they still come up to even less books than they did when they started the new 52. Because they had 52 books. And now they're closer to like 35, maybe 40 something. They're still less than 52. But what a lot of people point out, and several people don't realize that need it pointed out to them, is I get that Batman is your biggest draw, the Superman's your biggest draw, the Justice League is your flagship book. But Lord in heaven, we don't need five Superman books, we don't need five Batman books. We don't need all of this oversaturation. We need, there may, you know, there needs to be a book for everyone, you know? Of uh, Your Catwoman book is canceled. There's tons of people that love Catwoman. That one lasted the full run up until the, uh, the actual New 52 universe dropped. You know, you've got 
three or four different Harley Quinn comics riding the wave when there's no Booster Gold comic to be found, which if you've read Convergence, you understand where Booster is right now at that point, but that would still be an interesting read. You know, there's no Blue Beetle book currently. The Titans book, how cool would it have been to actually see some of them get their solo books and just see them go on their way, you know? The, the Lantern books, Red Lanterns did so well while it was going. You've got Sinestro going right now. Well, why don't we get a book with the Indigo Corps? Really get into the mystery of their origins and stuff like that. There are so many faucets of the DC Universe that you could be using instead of giving us so much Batman that we're, you know, your, your kids will love it. Don't get me wrong. That's what by the end of the day, that's what's going to be, you know, in my opinion, bad, is that this is going to sell well to a degree to your kids and everyone, but there are so many stories out there that could be told for everybody and not just fans of only these certain people, these certain characters. And it it just kills me to see stuff like that happen. You've got these writers and artists that are going to be killing themselves to get two books out a month whereas they could have been just doing one a month or even keeping it fresh to say okay I'm gonna do Batman but I also do Aquaman so I'm not just constantly drawing Batman all the time or just writing Batman all the time which that also has its pros and cons mind you if you're the main writer of Batman in general, and you're writing like four of the eight Batman books that's going to come out in a month, uh, then you're going to be able to keep up with your own story and your continuity a lot better. But, you know, after about six, eight months, I don't care how much you love Batman, you may want to draw Superman or write Superman, but by God, you are going to be a little tired of constantly writing Batman so much. Writers need breaks. Artists need breaks. It's not like this is their one world. Their one thing is like, I created Batman. I own Batman. This is my thing. I'm going to do whatever I want. By the end of the day, they have to go by the editors and the people who make the final say on all of their decisions. So there's a lot of rules and boundaries and things that's going to not keep it as fresh for a while. Now, with that said... Reading the solicitations for a lot of the upcoming books, Batman, Superman, Justice League, Aquaman, Constantine, all these books, they're fresh stories, they're awesome stories, and a couple of them, they're basically slight rehashes. Not really sure how I like the idea of Luther and Doomsday being Superman's first jump on villains here to, as the get-go. Or the fact that this is almost becoming a slight recreation of the death of Superman, since we've got Eradicator and John being Superboy in upcoming books. But, that being said, the stories do sound good. The stories coming up sound amazing. And to a degree, I'm still going to be a part of it. Mostly in trade paperbacks. But, I really just can't get on the bandwagon with twice monthly books when it's so many of them. If it was just action comics and detective comics. If it was just two or three, that would be different. You know, I I collected some of the weeklies, but I collected them because they tied into bigger stories. I didn't cl want to, I loved Earth 2's World in, but I won't lie. The only reason that tagged me on there is because I knew it tied into Convergence. Same with Future's in. Well, technically, I also got Futures in because it had Terry McGinnis in it. But I didn't pick up Batman Eternal. And I love Batman. But, you know, if the weekly's not going to tie into a bigger continuity arc, that's kind of my draw to it. I'm not going to get into that. You know, if there was a Superman Eternal, as huge a Superman fan I am, I'm not going to do it. I might buy a couple of the books that Doomsday shows up in if he showed up in it because I love Doomsday. But for as a whole, out of 52 issues that show up, I might only get five of them. I'm not getting the whole series like that. I'll get the trade paperbacks. But I just can't warrant that. My file is already pretty big a month. And 
it would surely end up being way cheaper for me in the long run to go a separate route. Now, with that said, my apologies for going on that kind of a rant right now, but I hope every one of you enjoys what you're about to read on Rebirth. Like I said, knowing the few things I've had spoiled to me so far, and some of the theories that I've got of my own, this is going to be an amazing ride, and I hope, I hope they can make it to where they fix whatever things were, have been mentioned by fans and such as being broken to the New 52 without changing too much of the New 52. Because, like I said, I love the New 52 the way that it is. And I hope they don't change too much. But at the same time, I hope they return some of those elements that have been missing this whole time in a way that makes sense. So, now with that said, I'm going to leave off on some positive notes. I'm going to actually be doing a bonus video this week as a post-rebirth. So once I've picked up the book and I've had a good read, you guys are going to get two of me this week as a special video. I'm not going to give a full announcement on when I'm going to throw that up there. Just consider a bonus sometime this week. Just keep an eye on the culture cache for that. I've also got some special surprises rolling up in the next couple weeks that I think you'll enjoy. One specific to Civil War. So I will see you next time for the next issue as we keep this fire burning.